Good evening. I'm Ryan Croak. And I'm Katherine Harris. And whether you're tuning in from your couch or from your kitchen. Or even from a beach house in Bermuda. Thank you so much for joining the 39th Annual Springfield Public Schools Foundation Annual Virtual Dinner Event. And this is our first annual virtual dinner event. Indeed it is. For four decades, caring people from across Springfield have given generously to the Springfield Public Schools Foundation, making new opportunities for learning in traditional areas like reading, writing, math, and science, and opening doors for students in history, art, music, and technology. Mm -hmm. 2020 presented an unbelievable challenge for the students, teachers, staff, and families of District 186. But the community persisted. Students and teachers found a way to connect and carry on with the crucial work of teaching and learning. The foundation carried on with its mission too, making grants to improve learning in these very uncertain unprecedented times. So tonight, as a 186 Foundation board member, it is my honor to welcome every one of you to this very special virtual presentation for the 186 Foundation's annual celebration. We really hope that this program reflects the gift, the goodness, and the potential of our awesome public schools in Springfield. Now, before I turn it over to our superintendent, Jennifer Gill, I want to thank every single person who has contributed to the Springfield Public Schools Foundation in the past, and thank those of you who have given so generously to make tonight's event successful. Superintendent Gill? Good evening. I'm Jennifer Gill, Superintendent of Schools of Springfield District 186. I'm so happy to be here tonight for our virtual Springfield Public Schools Foundation dinner. Thank you for joining us. Um, doing it in a little bit of a different way this year is something that we've all gotten used to, but I'm so happy to be here with all of you. I'm excited to tell you that District 186 is doing well. We are at the one year mark of having to do things a lot differently because of COVID-19 in our community, but we have persevered and we've done so with all of the great work of our teachers, our support staff, our administrators, our custodians, our school nurses, everybody who has really chipped in and made things a success in District 186. We're doing well and we're there because of the community that have supported us. I'm reminded by Tim Elmore, who wrote a great book called Marching Off the Map, that we are in a world where we have to prepare our students to navigate a future that we don't yet know, that is new, that has not yet been chartered. He wrote that book in 2017, but it's telling for today's times. As March rolled around last school year, we definitely had to march off the map. We didn't have a book or a pathway in front of us to tell us how to deal with the past year, but we did so by putting all of our great minds together and really supporting our students and our staff through this change. We know it's been difficult. We've had barriers in our way, but we've gotten through it because we have the support of organizations like the Springfield Public Schools Foundation. Another book that I always turn to is Good to Great by Jim Collins. He talks about the flywheel. The flywheel moment is the moment when an avid fisherman takes his flywheel out into a beautiful river, I'm imagining lined by mountains and a perfect beautiful day, and he's able to cast the fly perfectly so that it achieves its outcome. And when you think about running an organization, it's no different. The flywheel is a set of, ser of really smooth moments that you go through in order to achieve your outcome. We've had to think about all of the steps that we have to take to achieve our flywheel moment in education. We've had to really redesign our curriculum. We had to get technology devices in every student's hands. We had to provide over 1,800 hotspots in our community so that our students had the right connectivity. We had to change the way we were teaching through Zoom classes and remotely and now in a hybrid format. Each and every step of the way, took a very smooth motion in order to get there that were combined a variety of parts. 
One of those varieties is the support from the community. Once again, the Springfield Public Schools Foundation has walked alongside us from the beginning. They've helped us purchase those hotspots for students. They helped us get the right technology in the classrooms with projectors and technology into students' hands. They've helped us as teachers wrote creative and very well-detailed plans of what they wanted to do to meet their needs in their classroom, and they've been able to fund those. It's the support that we have from the community, not only the Springfield Public School Foundation, but also our medical partners in the community that have helped us with testing, with appointments, with now getting our vaccinations, all of these different moving parts coming together to really have an outcome of a very smooth and fluid motion that will help us take our next step forward. Our next step forward is a march off the map. There's still no path as we head into the next few months, but together we can make it work. And together we will make District 186 the greatest that it can be. Thank you again for being here for our virtual dinner with the Springfield Public Schools Foundation. I hope you enjoyed dinner with some of our local restaurants, and I'm looking forward to hearing Dr. Brian Clay, who's a Springfield High graduate and a vaccine researcher at Pfizer. Enjoy your evening, and thank you again. Thank you, Superintendent Gill, and thanks to everyone on your team and on the Springfield District 186 School Board for weathering the year that was 2020. We are grateful for your service and your leadership that you provide to Springfield's students, teachers, staff, and administrators. Thanks to the persistence of educators in Springfield and the kindness of our community, we will soon have a chance to meet and hear about the real impact you, the generous donors, are helping to make from just a few recent 186 Foundation grantees. Principal Vincent Turner from Washington Middle School was awarded a grant focusing on social and emotional learning called Project Calm. Hi, my name is Vincent Turner. I'm the principal of Washington Middle School in Springfield, Illinois. I'd like to thank the foundation for assisting us this year and uh, funding our project, Project Calm. Project Calm is designed to help students have self-regulation skills and motivation. When we started thinking on what we could do and the uh, information we needed to come up with for the grant for the foundation, we started looking at our population specifically. Washington Middle School has a high low income population and many of those students are coming to us from trauma. So we wanted to find some ways to address the issues that our students were having, but also keep them involved in the educational process. Sometimes when students have these other issues, they become disengaged. So we needed some way to figure out to keep students engaged. Teaching uh, social emotional learning was very important for students to learn some of those skills that I mentioned earlier, self-management and self-regulation. And again, students from trauma sometimes struggle having uh, those skills. So we were very excited to get the grant from uh, the Springfield Educational Foundation and start implementing some skills. But then COVID happened. So that was one of the things that we had to back up, but we didn't want to give up on what we had started with uh, Project Calm. So we came up with ways that we can incorporate those things remotely working on students with uh, in our advisory classes and allowing students to talk with a teacher, feel they could build a connection with the teacher and uh, start there. The uh, most of our time starting out with remote learning was learning about the students and what they needed. And uh, we created an advisory book that is used by the teachers that has meditation skills, uh, yoga, we have teachers doing yoga. And we also have uh, teachers teaching their students about self-management. So it's been difficult to roll out some of the things that we wanted to roll out when we first started imagining this grant last year, but we found a way to start incorporating it into the remote setting. And now moving into the hybrid setting, we're gonna be even more excited about getting some of those skills out to students. Thank you to the Springfield Public Schools Foundation and all of you for your contributions in helping us fund this program. Nicolette Harris, fifth grade teacher at Owen Marsh, was awarded a Return to Learn grant to fund news magazine subscriptions for her remote-only classroom. 
Hi, my name is Nicolette Harris. I'm a fifth grade teacher at Owen Marsh Elementary, and I am so honored to speak to you to tell you a little bit about the grant that you made possible for myself and my students, and just to thank you for all of your support this year. So in the past, I have received many grants from the Springfield Public Schools Foundation, and they've always done an amazing job of supporting the needs of my students in a variety of different ways. Of course, this year is a year like no other, and so I was trying to find ways that I could reach my students in this crazy pandemic. Right now, I am the reading and writing teacher at Owen Marsh, and of course, the value of having books in students' hands is something that is extremely important to me. So when I heard about the Return to Learn grants, I was really excited to incorporate the Springfield Public Schools in this need. There's actually a magazine that's called The Week Junior, and what's phenomenal about this magazine compared to other materials from other sources is they actually were offering to mail the subscriptions to students' houses directly. So the combination of this grant opportunity and this amazing subscription was a beautiful way to address this need. And so I wrote the grant for the Return to Learn plan, and I asked for the Springfield Public Schools to make it possible that every single one of my fifth grade students receives a subscription in the mail every single week. So what is amazing is every single week, every one of my students receives this magazine. It has current events, it has sports, it has entertainment, it's highly engaging, and then every week I can uh, create lesson plans where I know every single student has that reading material in their hands. And so no longer am I frustrated with how can I make sure that my students really have reading material in their hands? How can I really address this brand new need that I've never had in my 18 years of teaching. And so without your support, without this grant, I would not have been able to make this possible. And so on behalf of all of my students and myself, I just want to say thank you so much for this amazing opportunity that is addressing a very important need this year, and it is making a huge difference. Next, it's my pleasure to introduce Aaliyah Cross, a talented vocalist from Springfield High School. Thank you. 
Mia Jefferson, third grade teacher at Butler, has secured multiple foundation grants over the last five years. Let's hear from Ms. Jefferson. Hi, my name is Mia Jefferson and I teach third grade at Butler School. This year, we are celebrating 100 years of fabulous learning. I have been teaching six years in Springfield Public Schools, and since my first year, I have had the opportunity to have grants fully funded through Springfield Public Schools Foundation. Those grants include classroom libraries, math centers, flexible seating, and lots of technology and hands-on learning items. Some of the things that are most popular in my classroom are the items that we use in our math centers. The hands-on learning helps the children each day in their math lessons. I certainly believe that students must hold the learning in their hands before they can hold it in their minds. It has really made a difference in their everyday learning and they are so thankful. We also have coding robots, and when they start the year with me, they have no coding experience, and we do a lot of fun, quick lessons, and soon they're able to code their own robots and have them move freely through the classroom. We also have Osmos, iPens, and lots of other items that we love. We are so thankful for all of the items that we have gotten through the Springfield Public Schools Foundation. We know that it really elevates our learning every day. Keeping, keeping students engaged is the key to keeping them learning. I am so thankful for all of the items that I have gotten through the Springfield Public Schools Foundation. And I know without them, my teaching career may not be as fun and, and as exciting as it truly is. So to all the donors, thank you for all that you do. You have made a tremendous difference in the lives of so many children at so many schools here in our school district. Thank you. Melissa Stover, a pre-K teacher at the Early Learning Center, won a Return to Learn grant to help provide supplies for her hybrid classroom. Hi, I'm Melissa Stover. I'm a teacher at the Early Learning Center, and I want to thank you very much for your donations and to the foundation for this grant. Because of this grant, um, my students were able to learn at home when they might not have otherwise been able to do so. I was able to provide each one of my students with a baby doll and accessories for the baby doll so they were able to learn how to take care of them to really grow their social emotional skills. We were able to provide paint sticks for their creativity Creativity, stamps um, that had letters and shapes for their recognition, um, and magna doodles for them to draw, which is one of their favorite things. Um, they love drawing, and they're able to draw their name, pictures, and lots of things. Um, because of gener your generosity, we were able to provide them with all of these things. Thank you very much. Lisa Boyd, a special ed Reading Specialist at Sandberg has secured foundation grant funding to bring new reading materials to some students facing significant challenges. Hello, my name is Lisa Boyd. I am a special education teacher at Sandberg Elementary, and I've been teaching in District 186 for 30 years. The district does a great job providing the curriculum that my students need. It's called corrective reading, and my kids learn to read, and it's amazing. But they needed materials that they could try out their new skills. And so when I would bring books from our guided reading um, lit lab, the students would say, these are baby books. Or they might say, I've seen this before. So they weren't really thrilled about it. So I needed books that were at their interest level, because I have older students, but that were still at the early stages of learning. And I found these amazing books by the company High Noon. They're called High Low Readers, and they have transformed the energy in my classroom. Because the kids have started discussing this as we're on the way to my room. They'll say things like, I'm not sure what's going to happen, or why does it always at the end of the chapter, they make you want to read it again. <laughs> they make you want to see what's going to happen next. And that was amazing to me. Um, because they had never really shown this deep interest. 
the books that I have purchased have things that the kids are going to need to know, like what happens if you're late for practice all the time, or if you tell a lie to your parents. These were things that my kids could really relate to, and it made all the difference in the world in their engagement in my class. I cannot express how fun it is to have kids who are, are wanting to connect with reading for the first time ever. And I have the, the foundation um, to thank for that. So thank you very much, foundation um, donors, because what you do impacts our community. And I am so proud to work in Springfield where the community works with public education. Tonight's event would not be complete without student artwork. Please check out the Springfield Public Schools Foundation webpage listed below or our Facebook page for a very easy to order form. Every nickel of proceeds in tonight's art sale will be invested directly into the art programs at Southeast High School, Lanfear High School, Springfield High School, and the Lawrence Education Center. Now it's my pleasure to introduce to you Ellen Tuttle from Springfield High School. Our keynote speaker is a true role model for all the young people in our community, especially those who may want to pursue a career in health or science. Long before Brian Clay, PhD, became a principal scientist at Pfizer, a company helping to beat back pandemic and disease in real time, he was young Brian Clay, Grant Middle School student, and then proud graduate of Springfield High School class of 1995. He was also a multiple award-winning sprinter at Springfield High School and as an undergraduate at DePaul. Brian earned his PhD in immunology from the University of Chicago and is devoting his professional life to finding a cure for cancer. And he balances this all out by enjoying time with his wife, Kimberly, and their 14-month-old son, Bryce. Without further ado, Please welcome Dr. Brian Clay. Hello, and thank you for the invitation to speak tonight. I'm Dr. Brian Clay. Of course, unfortunately, I'm, I'm unable to be there in person tonight. But I'm proud to call Springfield my hometown, as I have many ties uh, to Springfield High School. Uh, I was born and raised there in Springfield. Uh, my mom was a teacher at Springfield High in the 80s. And both my sister and my brother and myself are all proud senators. After I graduated from Springfield High, I went on to get my bachelor's of science in biology from DePaul University in Chicago, and eventually getting my PhD in immunology from the University of Chicago. 
I currently uh, work for Pfizer. I'm based out in San Diego, California. Uh, I work in their oncology department in their cancer vaccines and immunotherapeutics section. I, in there, I study kind of novel ways to get the immune system to hopefully kill tumors. It's a novel and exciting new field. We call it immuno-oncology, and there's some, been some relatively uh, early successes in this field. And I've worked on a couple of cancer vaccines that are in the clinics for triple negative breast cancer and non-small cell lung cancer. But all the basis of my career success have been based and started uh, there in Springfield, and especially during my high school years at Springfield High School. And I still keep in touch with many of my friends from various high schools across Springfield. And as we get together, uh, we've been kind of scattered and been able to be successful all across the country. But we think about how being raised in Springfield has laid a good foundation for all of our successes. Um, I felt the teachers there at Springfield generally cared about, about my success. Uh, and then I remember Dr. Tolano, my physiology, my biology teacher, and Mr. Cooler uh, as my zoology teachers, really sparked an interest in biology and the biological sciences that, of course, uh, you know, started this career that path that I'm on. But the interest wasn't only in the classroom also. Uh, I ran track, so you know, Dr. Con uh, Mr. Connolly and Mr. Devlin are my track coaches there. And my guidance counselor, such as Mrs. Betts, uh, also taught me the, the importance of determination and hard work and caring for others, which have also helped me along my career. One thing I thought was great about uh, there in Springfield is that they had many other curriculars, extracurricular activities, not just in sports, but in science too, that kind of sparked and supported my development. I was a member of a program called Principal Scholars Program that was based through the University of Illinois that got together minority students from across the state who were interested in math and science. Through this program, I went to you know, I was a leadership conference in Washington, D.C. I participated in a statewide science competition, which, by the way, the Springfield High team got second place the year I participated in it. Um, and then also, I... Um, I took a month-long college prep class at the U of I, and that allowed me to interact with industry leaders from across the state. These programs not only supplemented my science education, but also provided me with a network of like-minded individuals from diverse backgrounds from across the state, many of which I still keep in touch with today. I also got my first real job due to a program there at Springfield High School. Uh, the summer after my junior year, I worked at the SIU School of Medicine. There was a program that brought in students from all uh, high schools and exposed them to research careers at the, at the SIU School of Medicine. I worked in the lab of Dr. Evans in the neurology department, uh, doing some uh, experiments on part of the rat brain called the hippocampus. Uh, and now that I look back, you know, the experiments I had there, they really weren't in depth or very complicated. But they were important to my career because it showed that a career doing laboratory research was possible. I knew I wanted to um, get a degree in biology, but I thought that meant that probably I'd be a doctor because that's everyone I know who had a biology degree in it to be a doctor. But that showed me that there were other career paths available and that probably wouldn't even happen. I mean, a lot of people I knew uh, from college didn't have the opportunity to work in an actual research lab in high school. But because of this program, in collaboration with the public schools and the SIU School of Medicine, I had that opportunity. Well, I see, I feel that Springfield had a great diverse background, which has also provided a strong foundation in my career. Um, I had friends from all different nationalities, different religions, different financial backgrounds. That, as you know, as you go out into the work field, you have to deal with these people from uh, and work with people from all different backgrounds. And I think being in Springfield with a fairly diverse population laid the ground for that success. As I, uh, in my lab that I worked in for my graduate degree, we had a very diverse lab uh, from 
all religions. The woman who um, ran the lab, she was Jewish. We had a Hindu and a Muslim who actually happened to be married to each other, which is his own long story. We had someone who was Mormon. We had someone who was Catholic. I was raised Baptist. Uh, we had some other someone from China who was Buddhist. We used to joke that whenever we had a grant going out, that everyone go home and pray to your God. You've got them all covered. So this grant should get funded. But this showed me that uh, even though these people we were all from diverse backgrounds, that we could all work together and come together to work for a common goal. And now my job now, I have to work with people from all over the world. And we have all come together to, to work on this common goal. So it's important that you're exposed to that at a young age and that you realize that someone who may look like you, look that might not look like you or might not sound like you or may not have as much money as you have, but they still have value and they have thoughts that should be considered um, as you come to, to the career. As I reflect on these experiences, the common theme that I think about is that uh, growing up in Springfield, I was exposed to a lot of different new opportunities at a young age, which I think was very important as, as through my development. Although I didn't realize at the time, these early occurrences in my life built a strong foundation for my current success. For example, when I was running track and I probably didn't like Mr. Devlin to give me run all those long runs, I wasn't thinking like, hmm, this is gonna really um, benefit me in the future. It's, it's, I'm really building some strong hard work and determination here as I'm running. It's gonna help me one day when I'm working late at night in the lab getting my PhD. Now I hated it, but now looking back, I realized that it actually did that. It built hard work and a strong work ethic that helped me get my PhD. And also, even when I had that job at the SAU School of Medicine, I liked it, but I think right after that, as I look back, it wasn't that an automatic spark that I knew I wanted to go into a lab research uh, career. But as I was going through college and I thought of things I wanted to do, I remember like, you know what, I actually kind of liked uh, working in the lab and maybe I should pursue that. And I wanted to look at ways that I can help cure diseases and uh, had that spark that maybe that's a way I can find something new and a new discovery. And I remember that I had that research experience back in high school that I really, you know, I kind of liked and I thought it was interesting. So maybe I should, I should pursue that further. But if I never had that opportunity, who knows if I would be here today. I didn't realize at the time the sacrifices that others made to help me get to this position until now, now that I'm a parent now and I'm able to help others, I realized that people before me have really sacrificed and helped me along the way. Uh, I was on a recent call with a track coach from DePaul where I ran, also ran track runs at DePaul and he was talking to donors and he was said that he often, he appreciates us helping them and helping uh, fund some scholarships. And he tells his kids all the time that, you know, if they're acting up that uh, people that you don't even know have contributed money and hard work to help you out and to contribute to your success because they realize that their success was helped by someone else before them. So they want to go back and help you. So, um, and so because of that, that, you know, maybe you make them help them think that um, to act right, you know, to help them to do better, to work harder because people that don't even know you are helping supplement your education and have belief in you. So on behalf of the early 90s Brian Clay that went to Springfield High School, I want to say thank you tonight for contributing and helping for the success of the future students and the future leaders of, this, of Springfield and the world. Uh, your work and devotion and helping people uh, and helping the kids in their life. Uh, you're helping kids in the ways that they don't even realize it right now. But your help that you're in, in support for District 186 may help uh, fund a new architect like my brother is. It may help fund a new government leader, maybe a new state senator or U.S. senator because of the help that you're uh, providing tonight. Maybe help uh, start create the new doctor or nurse for a future pandemic, or maybe help someone 
uh, who's interested in helping and trying to find a cure for cancer like myself. Although the students uh, may not realize the help that you're providing and the outcome and the impact that you're having on their lives, later on they will appreciate it. So on behalf of them, on behalf, like I said, on my early 90s Brian, uh, who helped, who needed that help a while ago, I appreciate your help as you make a big difference in these kids' lives and will help make Springfield and the world a better place. So thank you again and have a good night. How about that Spartan drum line? Weren't they really good? Sensational! Kudos! Hi, my name is Amarin Perez and I'm a senior at Lanford High School. I am also a member of the P4 program, which stands for the Physician Pipeline Preparatory Program. The P4 program is a joint partnership between District 186 and the SIU School of Medicine. I love being a part of the P4 program because it allows me to receive somewhat of a medical education well before medical school. One day, I hope to become a neurosurgeon specializing in neuro-oncology. Please enjoy the following video highlighting District 186 graduates now working in the healthcare field, bringing hope to all the communities they serve. Have a good night. Hi, my name is Jesse Moja and I'm a pulmonologist here in Springfield. I'm a proud product of the District 186 school system. I started out at Butler Elementary, then Isles for fifth and sixth, Grant for middle school, and finished up at Springfield High. I really can't say enough positive things about District 186. My high school chemistry teacher was simply amazing, and her inspiration was one of the things that contributed to my decision to go into medicine. After I wrapped up my medical training in Chicago and our family decided to move back to Springfield, we were very excited to enroll our kids in District 186. Thanks for everything. Hello, my name is Bianca Ward. I am a proud graduate of Southeast High School. I am currently employed at Memorial Medical Center as a cardiologist specialist. I've been employed for about 20 years. I am now a student at Methodist Nursing College. I will finish in December with my BSN in nursing. I would like to thank you so much for supporting the Springfield Public Schools Foundation. My name is Sean Crawford. I went to Southern View in Carl Sandburg Elementary Schools. I then went on to attend Benjamin Franklin Middle School and lastly, but certainly not least, Southeast High School. I am currently employed by Shown Dental where I'm an associate dentist. Hi everyone, my name is Whitney Ritchie Corafor and I am a proud 2004 graduate of Springfield Southeast High School and currently I am a pediatrician at Pediatric Hospital. 
hospitalist um, at Advocate Children's Hospital in Chicago, Illinois. Hello everyone, my name is Kanisha Green. I am currently a first year student at Southern Illinois University School of Medicine in Carbondale, Illinois. I just graduated from undergraduate school uh, at Howard University um, with my Bachelor's of Science in Biology. Uh, while I was in District 186, I graduated from Lanphier High School uh, as 12th in my class. I went to middle school at Franklin Middle School. For third, fourth, and fifth grade, I went to Jane Addams Elementary School. For first and second grade, I went to Wilcox Elementary School. And for kindergarten, I went to Feichens. Hello everyone, my name is Madeline Wagner and I am a Springfield High School class of 2013 alum. After graduating high school, I went on to the University of Kentucky where I obtained my BSN in nursing. I decided I missed Springfield so much that I came back and took a position at St. John's Hospital in their intensive care unit. I worked there for about two years. Currently, I am in a certified registered nurse anesthetist program at Marion University in Indianapolis. I will have my doctorate by the year of 2023. My name is Meredith Boley and I am a proud graduate of Springfield Public School District 186. I first attended Owen Marsh Elementary, uh, where years later, my mom, Martha Havey, went on to establish her legacy teaching kindergarten and first grade. I then went to Isles Elementary when it was a fifth, sixth center, and Grant Middle School. I then attended Springfield High School, where I was the third generation in my family uh, to go to Springfield High. And I also met my now husband, Darren Voley and I had the opportunity to complete a six-month internship in my senior year at Memorial Medical Center before I graduated. Currently, I am a general pediatrician at SIU Medicine in Springfield. I am an assistant professor of clinical pediatrics, as well as the education director for the Department of Population Science and Policy. One of the great joys of my career has been to be able to practice in my hometown uh, I actually get to take care of some of the children of classmates of mine, which has been a real privilege. I also really love being able to tell my patients that I attended the same schools that they are currently going to now, and that with an education from Springfield Public Schools, they can be a doctor one day too. Um, I really wanna thank all of the teachers and staff who helped me achieve my dream of becoming a physician. And I'm very excited for my own daughter to start kindergarten this fall, uh, where she will also be attending District 186 Public Schools. Thank you to our sponsors, teachers, students, families, to our community. You may already know that the Springfield Public Schools Foundation is the only not-for-profit that exists to raise funds for the 33 schools and more than 13,000 students who make up District 186. Your support means the world to so many young people in our neighborhoods and across our city. By coming together to support educators and students, we hope Springfield will be home to many more Brian Clays, future leaders in healthcare and health research that our world needs today and always. On behalf of the Springfield Public Schools Foundation, thank you so very much. Have a wonderful night, and here's to a happy and healthy year ahead. Good night.